Hi, my name is John Humanic. Welcome to my channel. I'm so excited you're here. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about what God told me about this coming December and the prophecy he's going to reveal to the children of God. So you're gonna to wanna to stick around for this whole video because it is gonna be transformative, super exciting, and please share it with a couple friends because it will bless them highly. If you are new to prophecy, it's really important that you take every prophecy back to the Lord because you need to be able to receive the things he wants you to receive in this coming season. And since this is gonna be an amazing blessing, especially in the context of finances, it's going to be important that you understand the things God wants you to walk out in this coming year, because there are going to be steps where blessings are going to come to your doorsteps, and there are going to be acts best where in which you're going to need to change part of your life in order to receive something new, as well as walk things out. So let's buckle up and listen to all the beautiful things God has said, because it is going to be absolutely amazing. If you're not familiar with Obed-Edom, this is the story of King David going back to the ark and wanting to bring the ark into the house of the Lord, which is what he wanted to build in Jerusalem. So David had in his mind to be able to build the first temple, but the ark wasn't even located in Jerusalem at that time, and he needed to be able to move the ark back into Jerusalem in order to be able to start his plans of building a house for the king of the universe. So David went out and got the ark, but he didn't understand the rules and regulations that Moses had about how to properly carry the ark into the city. And what they did is they put the ark on a cart and what it did is when they brought the ark back, what happened was, is if you're familiar with the way the ark was actually built, it turned into basically a capacitor where it basically charged up a ton of electricity. So when the ark was, when the oxen was walking and the ark stumbled, Uzziah reached out to touch it and literally got electrocuted and died on the spot. David was super upset and thought, okay, now my plans are ruined. I can't do anything, but God had a greater plan in store for David. The ark ended up in the house of Obed-Edom. And in Obed-Edom's house, it blessed him dramatically. And it was there for 90 days. And those 90 days, Obed-Edom had just dramatic transformation in his family to the point where David heard about it figured out the proper way to bring the ark back into Jerusalem. And guess what happened? He went and got the ark, brought it in Jerusalem and blessed David. And the rest you say is history. But that's what God wants to reveal to his people today because the blessings of Obed-Edom are active in this moment. This December that's coming up and the word, the Lord wants you to hear this. This word is so incredible. And again, share this with a friend because you're not gonna wanna miss it and stick around for the whole video. Is the Obed-Edom blessings are active in your life today. And the fact of the matter is, is God's going to enhance it even more because whatever he would have normally done in the context of blessings that would have taken an entire year, he's going to do just in the month of December. We've seen this prophecy actually happen multiple times this year. It happened over the summer and it happened this fall. And it was so dramatic, even in my life, that I saw that same acceleration. And God wants to have that same acceleration for you, but it's not just about finance finances. It's about everything. It's about financial breakthrough. It's about your career. It's about the very things that God wants for you in your life. Favor, providence, all forms of influence. If you're looking to start a family, God wants to bless you with a family, a blessings of abundance, your health. He wants to break the very things that have held you back all this year to set you up for this upcoming year that is going to be absolutely amazing. And I just want to encourage you today that the year of Obed-Edom is upon us and this blessing is going to start here in this month and it's going to continue to go into next year in a big and powerful way. But this isn't just the, the, the gist of the prophecy. This is just the beginning of what God wants to release through me to you into the world so that you can understand the blessings of Obed-Edom was a, 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 a basically a foreshadow of how the relationship with Christians were to be when the Holy Spirit came after Jesus ascended into the kingdom of heaven. What you're seeing here is, is that Obed-Edom sat 
in the presence of God. He, that's the key part is, is that you need to be in the presence of God, soaking in every single aspect that he wants to pour into your life. It's being attentive to the words that he has. You have to see this prophecy is re requires you to be involved. It requires you to be obedient. It requires you to be submissive. It requires you to be humble. It requires you to shed the activities you're doing today for the kingdom of God in order for you to pick up new ones that God wants you to have. This is a very big thing in the kingdom of God that a lot of young Christians miss. This prophecy talks about this for this December. God likes to work on calendars, and he has shifted a lot of the things that he looked to do in the past to account for the Gregorian calendar, which is what we're on today, which is a January to December setup. So there is a lot of things that God wants to do anew in January that he's prepping for you to do this December. But if you can't receive those things and you want to stay stuck in the same routines, this prophecy won't come to pass in your life because the blessings of Obed-Edom that applied to him and his family would then transfer to David because David seized the opportunity. He saw that Obed-Edom was blessed heavily. So guess what? He went back to God and received those blessings because it belonged to the king. It belonged to the kingdom because he was their spiritual leader. He was their authority. He was their high priest, and he operated in those ways. Now, he may have not necessarily been in the high priest office, but David operated in that manner because he put on the ephod and operated from the priestly standpoint because he was a foreshadow of Jesus Christ. And so when David got blessed, the entire nation, not just Obed-Edom, was blessed because of his humility, because of his obedience, and because of his surrender. That was the power of David pulling the Ark of the Covenant out of Obed-Edom's house back into Jerusalem. He put God in the place where God was going to be for an extended period of time because David knew he wanted to build a temple for him. David didn't know at the time that Solomon would build it, but that came to pass later. So this prophecy about blessings applies to your life. And how can you take this and understand, well, what does it apply? How are these concepts from the Old Testament going to apply to me today? What's well, very important for one, the biggest point that I can give you today to receive this prophecy is to receive it by faith. You have to firmly believe that God wants to bless you in this last month, these last 30 some days, by the time, but either by the time you listen to it or the, by the time you, you watch it later, there's going to be 31 or less days in the month of December that when you watch this video, that it will apply dramatically in your life. You've got to step into that season with expectation and grace, with the opportunity to know that he's going to give seed to the sower, bread to the eater, that he knows that when God speaks, that his word cannot come, vo come return void. And that is how things happen. It is the way of praise on your lips. It is thanksgiving on your lips for multiplication of the seed that's in the ground. It's so important to receive every aspect of this prophecy by faith, because that blessing of Odom and Edom is really a 10x blessing or even a 12x blessing, depending on what you're looking to accomplish. And what you're going to see here is what's going to happen is, is that all the things that you want to accomplish in December will be dramatically accelerated and allow you to leap into 2025, which is just going to be an amazing year because this was the year of expansion to prepare us for this upcoming year. And it's going to blow you away, but you can't receive anything that God wants to give you if you don't operate in a place of faith. The second aspect, you're going to be able to receive the blessings of Obed-Edom, belong to the, the aspect of surrender. That's number two. It's so important that you surrender your will to God. And you have to understand, it's very important that you must tease out the difference between your desires and his wants, because sometimes they're the same and sometimes they're not. And it's important because when God wants to bless you at the level he did with Obed-Edom, he did it because Obed-Edom welcomed the ark into his house. So you've got to do the same. You've got to let Jesus come into your heart. This prophecy and how it applies for financial blessings, this massive multiplier can only happen if you are surrendered to him, that you let him into your house, that you let 
Jesus come into your presence and you're willing to dwell with him, pray with him, sit with him, talk to him, listen to him, journal those words that he's saying. If you're not willing to do that, then you are you can step into a place of faith, but then you won't have what's necessary to do number step number three, which will come up, but you're not going to be in a posture to receive it because blessings are both timed and require a location. And I can give you so many examples, even in my life, where I was supposed to receive a blessing, but I either wanted the blessing on my own timeline, therefore I rushed it or waited too long, or I just didn't understand or didn't care and I missed it altogether. Blessings require surrender. Surrender requires obedience, which allows you to move into a place where you can walk to a certain place physically. This is a physical location at a physical time. It could be as simple as going to your mailbox. It could be as simple as going and arriving on work on time and then receiving a gift from work that happens to be a blessing that God wanted to give you. It's sometimes so simple that people miss it. But Obed-Edom sat in the presence of God for those three months. Obed-Edom, we don't know how old he was, but I'm sure the, given all the things that was talked about as his king, as part of his servanthood to the king of Israel, David at the time, he probably lived a full and great life. So imagine Obed-Edom receiving the Ark of the Covenant. And let's say, let's say Obed-Edom lives to he's 90. Well, he only had the Ark of the Covenant at his house for 90 days. Out of all those years that he lived, maybe 80, 90, or 100 years, or maybe more, he only had the Ark of the Covenant at his house for three months. That's a beautiful blessing. But he had to be at his home to receive it. If he was out traveling or doing work or maybe running a business and he was overseas, because back then when you left town, you could easily leave town for 30 and 60 days, maybe even more, even up to a year or two years. So if he was away doing something else that he wanted to do, even though he may have been operating in the permissible will of God, but not necessarily the perfect will of God, he would have missed out on that blessing. That's important. Obedience is that important. You have to be present at the time in order to receive the blessing. The ark disappeared from his house afterwards, and he had to go into the presence of the ark in Jerusalem to receive those blessings going forward because the way they operated in the Old Testament was very different. The Holy Spirit came and went, and God wanted them to physically go to the temple to pray to him. That didn't mean he, they couldn't offer sacrifices elsewhere, but it made it very clear in the Old Testament that if you could walk to Jerusalem, you needed to walk to Jerusalem. So it was really, really a different style of lifestyle back then. And then now it's transformed because we can operate at any point in any time, but God still wants to bless you. So therefore obedience is key and the timing is key because it won't last forever. And point number three, which is so important, is understanding the fact that even though you're going through this surrender process, which is core to number two, obedience is so key because obedience is the aspect that unlocks the thing God wants to do in your life in order to move you forward. The blessings of Obed-Edom that he wants to embark upon your life require you to do something that requires you to accomplish something for the kingdom of God. Let me repeat that again, because that's how God works. He wants to bless you in order to bless others. So he wants his kingdom to move forward in power and in glorifying him. But if you're not going to do it for him, but you're going to do it for yourself, it's going to be very difficult for him to bless you. So you have faith, you have obedience, and you have surrender. Obedience is critical because if you don't have those aspects of walking out the thing he wants you to walk out, what will happen is you will receive the blessings through an incorrect heart. Maybe an orphan heart, maybe a heart that's hurt, maybe the heart that's prideful, maybe the heart that's impatient, maybe it's a heart that you're trying to be greedy. But when you understand that God's calling you to something, he wants you to be obedient in this hour. He wants you to prepare you for this new year that's coming. This prophecy is so important for you to understand is that you need to receive what he has through faith, through surrender, through obedience, and to receive a blessing of this scale, it has to be done with the right heart. It has to be done for his kingdom, to be able to push his kingdom with power and authority 
through the world to bring back lost souls, to, to disciple the church, to grow it and to allow it to become something greater than it is today. And you can't accomplish greater if you're stuck in yesterday. You can't accomplish greater if you're stuck in today. And that's really important to understand because there are so many Christians that miss the blessings of Obed-Edom because they would rather do what they want to do in the kingdom of God than what God wants them to do at that time. In those windows, again, Obed-Edom had 90 days to be blessed by God. And that blessing, I'm sure, lasted generations, not just his life, but blessed his children, his grandchildren, great-grandchildren. I wouldn't be surprised that his faithfulness, based upon what it says in Deuteronomy, that he is faithful to a thousand generation, that Obed-Edom's children that are alive today are blessed heavily by his actions back then. That's how important it is to be obedient to God in the season that's coming up here. In this December, it's so important that you receive these blessings in the way that God wants you to receive them so that you can pursue his kingdom. He's calling you for a specific task. He's calling you to accomplish something great. He's calling you to let go of the things that you used to do. He's asking you to forget about your successes which is so hard for people to do, and move forward so he can give you new ones. That's the essence of the kingdom. It's a constant transformation that what you did in the past, good or bad, is meant to stay there. And what is about to happen in the future may not reflect what you did in the past. That's why it was key. That's why David, when he saw the blessings that God was giving to Obed-Edom in his house, that he was so zealous for the Lord to the point when he brought the ark back, they would take six steps. Because remember, the Levites are carrying the ark on poles and they take six steps. And David would stop and dance and sacrifice animals to God. So I don't know the distance to Obed Edom's house to Jerusalem, but I'm sure six feet he's doing sacrifices. There was a lot of partying going on celebrating God. And that's the essence of that what God wants to do. And really, that's what we're going to talk about for point number four. It's so important to worship God, to give him thanksgiving, to praise him. Because it does say in the Bible that when you praise and glorify God, that will multiply and quicken your seed in the ground and allow the harvest to be yielded up from the earth and to come back to you. You, a lot of people in the Christian sects across the world, doesn't matter if you're in a religion or in a non-denominational church, doesn't matter. They don't understand typically that in order for you to tithe, to return back the money, that there is an action on your part. A lot of people think that those ties that they've stored up in the ground and spiritual ground for all these years just grow into trees and they can just go pick the fruit whenever they want. That's not how it works. You have to sow into the kingdom of God, either whether that's through tears, whether that's through tithing, it doesn't matter how you do it. Even if you're, you're doing it kicking and screaming and you don't want to do it at all, but rather you just do it because you want to be obedient. And that's a, a great first step. You have to understand is that that's going to turn into a spiritual tree. And that spiritual tree is going to start to create fruit, more and more fruit. But in order for you to get that fruit, you have to praise God. You have to thank him. You have to glorify him. You have to worship him. Because what happens is it's both through praise and thanksgiving. It's both through worship and glorifying God that everything is multiplied and can be received very quickly. That's where a lot of Christians who want to break off the spirit of poverty on their life, this poverty mindset, rather than moving into an abundant mindset, what ends up happening is that they stop short and they think, oh, the, the money is just going to come to me in the mail. It's going to come to me through my work. It's going to come to me through my business. You have to take this next step. Step number four this month in December to receive the blessings of Obed-Edom require you to be able to praise God as often as you can. I mean, do it in the shower, do it on your walk, do it on your car ride, do it everywhere you go, do it in the grocery store, in the parking lots, in your kitchen, making breakfast, making lunch, making dinner. It doesn't matter. You have to unlock 
the blessings of God in your life. You have to multiply those seed so that the harvest can come. Because you have to remember one important thing is if you know anything about fruit trees, is, is once that fruit tree is completely full of fruit, it has to eventually drop its fruit. And so when you're doing is, is you're literally in the spirit realm by praising, thanking, and worshiping God. What you're doing is, is you are literally forcing the spiritual tree that has your financial blessings on it to yield its fruit. And you do that through those things. And so it's so important. If you want the blessings of Obed-Edom this December to really fill out your life, to set you up, to maybe even give you money to pay for Christmas gifts, to be able to set you up for that year-end bonus that you may not get, but God's going to say, look, I'm going to take what the devourer took and give it back to you seven times, 10 times, 12 times in this blessing, then you need to do this through praise and worship. You need to do this through thanksgiving. You need to do this by glorifying God every chance you have. And if you do these steps, these four beautiful steps, faith, submission, obedience, and praise and worship, what you're going to see is the blessing of Obed Edom come into your house this month in December, and it will unlock all the things that will carry you into the year 2025 in an amazing and abundant way. And you will blaze a path for the kingdom of God that you never thought was possible, but he wants to do it in partnership with you. So I pray this message blesses you. If it did, please share it with a, a couple friends. And if you love content like this, we started up a new Patreon site. You can go there, patreon.com slash John Humanic. You can partner with this ministry and get involved in a ministry that is moving the gospel forward. We have over a million subscribers on social media, over 60 million views that have seen the gospel, 20,000 confirmed souls that are now in the kingdom of God in thus just this year alone. It's incredible what God's doing in this ministry. Come join us, join your faith with our faith and allow us to take the, the blessings that you're going to give us to move into the world, to the dark places, to shine a light that only Christians can do. God bless.